What's up guys? It's Black and back with some more RA content. We are carrying on with Battle Season 3. This time we have Team Yorick Hunt, which is of course Dying Fetus and the formidable Andrew. Looks like Andrew is going to be playing Russia this time and Fetus is also going to be playing Russia this time. So we got a double Russia here on the top spawn. And in the bottom, it is Team Slotedman. That is, of course, Creo and Fazar. Creo also playing Russia and Fazar playing his typical allies. In fact, yes, he did go any allies and he got France. And yeah, so three Russians in this game. That's going to be a lot of Tesla tech, I imagine. Creo definitely a favoring of tech. Fazar, of course, his tier 1.5 mastery. Lots of concaves, really big long concaves, and uh, a lot of base pushing. This is Kosovo, once again, 2v2. We've seen this map already a few times. We're going to see a lot more. Probably one of the most popular maps on this series. Uh, probably since we got rid of some of the less popular maps from last season and did not carry over so many of the popular maps from last season. So, both players just uh, going out for the oil decks here. Looks like Korea went with the dog first, and then Fetus just went with a engineer first, but he did bring a kennel, so he's going to have a dog coming down here, I imagine. This dog easily gonna snipe away that one rock uh, rifle, rather, these line of rifles gonna get another one. And then Fetus, oh, if this was actually going straight in, he might get it, but unfortunately it's gonna run into the rifle first, and he's not gonna be able to get the engineer so close. Maybe a force fire, but unfortunately not. Creo right on top of it getting that. On the other hand, this dog could come up good against Fazar over here. It looks like Andrew is also with the dog over here, so lots of dogs coming in. That is the correct move when you're playing Soviets. I think dogs are absolutely fantastic, and medics too. Also really important for allies. As you can see, this guy who got poked away, he's just going to get instantly healed. But this dog is going to slowly inch forward if Fetus is uh, in a little bit better position. You don't want them completely stacked like that. But yeah, this is going to be really good. Already two rifles down, three. Barely actually escapes with the medic power of the medic. So that's, you know, basically 100 rifles saved on the first heal, 200 rifle on the second heal. Creo going to push up here since uh, Fetus is focusing down here. But Fetus is going to be able to secure that old Derek. So he will at least have one. He already does have the old Dark Avengers here too, so this is going to be actually pretty tough for crew to actually take. We'll have to see. He's going to push in. Oh, he loses the dog, and that is a big problem now. Now crew is going to have a lot more struggle trying to get into this. He's probably actually going to lose that engineer, and yep, there it goes. And that is a great conga line. But I think, unfortunately, crew just has the density there, so he's going to be able to push that back. Fetus is going to secure this old Dark for now, but he might lose this one. Nope, looks like Creo wants to go back. Looks like down here... Uh, Angel was pretty much unopposed. Uh, Hazar rather focusing all his infantry in the middle, not winning there. So he's going to put his engineer in that ranger, and I'm sure he's going to go straight to the middle. Probably maybe here next, maybe down here later. He's really good at decapping those old lyrics right around the expansion time when you're uh, not focusing on him. He's going to see that uh, Fetus, I'm having trouble with names already, is going to have this old deck already, but. Oh, there goes the dog, and that, all those rifles are going to get cleaned up. Actually, treated out not too terrible there at all. Looks like he is just down by 100, now 200, so he is going to lose this oil derrick if uh, they keep pushing here, but it looks like Fazar just content to go back, probably sensing that an APC is coming out, although it does not look like an APC is on the immediate horizon. It is... looks like it's going to be a harvester from Andrew, and Fetus went triple ref, so he just now has his war effect out, so I should expect him to start pumping out some rifles, but... Looks like Fazar is going to come back in here and steal this old direct. Same time, no, he's not going to lose his own old direct. That dog not being able to snack on that rifle, unfortunately. And now this old direct is threatened, so it looks like the bottom side is going to have control of all the old direct except for these back two right here, which is going to be firmly in Andrew's control for now. But Kuro, great scouting with this flock over there. Was reasonably sure that no armor was coming. Did expect the one maybe coming up here, which is exactly what he's doing. And uh, Fazar just coming out, killing rifle scouts right here, so it's pretty good. Fetus going with a. Uh, the triple ref but not really building any rocket soldiers or having any offensive pressure is kind of weird uh makes kind of his build a little bit poor i mean he's he's gonna be okay since he's not really losing anything at the same time like he just hasn't done anything he's lost two old derricks for pretty much free fazar coming in here gonna kill these two rifle scouts probably try to key to cap this but andrew is gonna be on top of it already sending an, uh, an apc over which is the correct play and fazar also making the correct play just gonna wait it out for a little bit till this gets uh, distracted can't leave this APC here forever. In fact, you're probably better off leaving like one or three rifles uh, just because you want this APC in the front lines. But it's like uh, Fazar might just leave that ranger here and drop it off for now. The only uh, downside to this is this ranger is now out of the fight. Uh, it could be really in handy coming up here. Just letting you know that it's safe to just go over here. And Fazar, it's like he's going to move straight out. And Andrew is very slow on expanding, which is he's doing his APC build in 3v2. That is pretty bold. Uh, maybe with 
this couple it looks like both players are actually in the same build just a little bit different if these both players collapse on a career right now that can actually be really good but unfortunately i think they're playing a little bit more split i mean andrew's army is here but it's not nestled in nice and tight with this one which is where it needs to be a ranger again dropping the engineer off now gonna go for the old eric now that andrew has pulled his apc away that's really good timing looks like andrew is yep he's aware of it and does have an apc he should probably just leave it right outside the vision actually it's gonna go in at a great time just in time to see that engineer show up and hopefully he'll be on top of it but yeah as i was saying uh they both gone mass apc mass racks but i don't think that's gonna go well against two tier uh defenses gets crushed there nice and uh letting you know fazar take all of this is pretty bad uh creo correctly calling this out there's a lot of apcs He's only seen Phoenix units. Andrews has been kind of doing this, so I just, I don't know. I don't like this build play. Phoenix is going to go in alone here, and I think it's not going to go so well. Four APCs against all this, plus heavy tanks. It's just not going to go very well at all, unless he gets some insane crushes, but so far the crushes have not been good. In fact, he's missing all of them. There's some finally some good crushes, but all of his armor's down. And now he has to deal with base fences, which are shortly going to be coming from Zavar, I'm sure, too, and to heavy tanks, so... Yeah, he's getting absolutely crushed here now. Andrew is rotating over some of his army, but it's just left Fazar to pretty much take all of this, and that's not something you can do on this map. Uh, you really need all of this eco that you can get at any one time. If you get denied one shield, it's just quickly snowballs out. Destroy loss not looking so good for uh, Fetus. He's down about 10k to 16,000, so it's uh, not looking great. Tier 2 already out for Fazar over here too, and there is still zero pressure from Andrew's side. He's even scouted and knows exactly where Andrew is. And, uh, yeah, she just, just continued to get cleaned up by basically a flak and, you know, a large contingent of infantry, but it's, uh, looking pretty bad for them. Andrew just not doing anything with this build. I mean, he has beaten Fazar in one of you once before with this type of build, so we can absolutely see if this goes really good with crushes, but again, relying on crushes is always an interesting choice, and he really could use every ounce of his energy to defend this Fazar attack, because this is quite deadly. There is six medium tanks there and a lot of rockets and infantry, so if he doesn't get the crushes, he's just gonna get folded really easily, and this little extra army could make all the difference there. Just now getting his expansion and salvage too with the ref too, so this is really unfortunate. Looks like Andrew is gonna maybe see the Fazar's army here, but, you know, Fazar is already pushing that MC up, so it's gonna be that much harder for him to hold. He's got a pretty good concave. If Andrew does not play this right, it is gonna go pretty poorly, and Fetus is Pretty, Fetus is pretty much dead. He's got one little armor here. I can't even deal with all that. And he's getting pushed here. So, yeah, I, I don't like the look of this one. I think this team on the top team one is uh, in dire straits here. If this goes down for Fetus or this army gets by undetected, which there was a rifle, for Tesla out, it's going to go pretty well. Fazar even doing APC or Fazar doing artillery, right? Instead of uh, letting this APCs come to him. So, it's going to be even worse for Andrew. Instead of having to deal with a just being crushed, now Andrew has to worry about just losing all his infantry before he can even get the crushes off and even out. Good little attack here from uh, Fetus, but again, he's not going to be able to deal with that. I don't know what happened to his army at the top. There it is, just now moving. And Fazar is just slowly just smothering Andrew. The longer this goes on, the worse shape Andrew's going to be in. He's losing pretty much stuff for free, just artillery pushing. That's not good at all. Does kill Harvester over here for Fetus, which is good, but again, Creo totally figures that out, splits his army off, and he's still got that army to deal with too, so I don't know about this. Fazar finally splitting his army off now that his base push is firmly established. Probably just needs an AA gun just to sure it up with his Blackhawks there, and it'll be totally good, but yeah. Andrew's going to lose this expansion pretty shortly. He's already down to almost two harvesters left. This harvester probably going to wind up just close. Actually gets killed by artillery. You don't see that too often, but there goes that army. Actually deflected pretty well by Fetus with just what he has, but... Again, he's letting all this come through the middle. Andrew's rotating to the left with his army. Actually loses a ton of infantry. That's not good. And this army in the back from Vizar is flanking at perfect timing. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be uh, Vizar and Korea's game to lose. Power goes down for Andrew, too. Here comes the crushes. So far, they're not bad. They're actually okay. But now Andrew has no armor, and he's got to deal with four artillery. That is way too much. He's getting collapsed upon all around him. Fetus was just not a factor in this game, and in fact, he's still losing on the top there, so... Yeah, this game is definitely already over. I mean, there is this little attachment here, but that's not even that important. Korea already has his tier 2 out, he has a second war factor here. These Blackhawks should be able to deal with it. Fazar can just rally some troops behind, and there is nothing left of their main base anyways, so... Even if they did have this army here killing stuff, without this main base, it is already over. And Andrew goes ahead and quits. 
Fetus calls the GG, and that is game one in just 10 minutes for Creo and Fazar. Pretty easily played on there. Fazar just had a SimCity game, built some RDs, and uh, Ange just kind of folded anyway. So there's that moment where, yeah, APC crushes can absolutely swing a battle, especially, you know, right as around that early expansion timing. But you can't play that passively. You actually have to do that aggressively, and it's either you win or you lose. It's all going to depend on the crushes. So flip the coin. You get the crushes, you win. You don't get the crushes, you lose. So... It is what it is, and we'll jump to game two. All right, we are back here for game two. It looks like Andrew is Ukraine this time. Fetus is allies with Germany. Creo is actually Ukraine, and Fazar is France. So a little bit of switch up on the factions a little bit. Uh, this map is, of course, Stalwart Shores. This is probably the one and only time you'll see this map. I'm not sure how much it was actually put in the season. Uh, this is a map that I made because Navy needs some tender loving care, and I... A lot of Rattle Season 3 was just trying to test Navy Balance, see how it works for team games. Uh, so I don't know how this map's going to play. It's definitely a very weird map for sure. Uh, control in this area is going to be pretty huge, but then you have wide open planks, so it's a little bit like Marigold, but the top half of the map becomes naval. Um, this area, if you can control, is pretty big. These communication centers tell you a lot about what's going on with the ore. There's two old darks too, which is always nice. Uh, you can't get to them on land. You're going to have to go for a... You have Yard, which I think if you build a power plant here, you can totally get to it. This player obviously more landlocked, but they have to control this middle anyways. Lots of oil derricks here down here in the studio, so you're gonna get at least three for one side, which is you know quite a quite a significant boost there. Fetus pushing across here, gonna get the first blood and kill a few of uh Creo's units too. It looks like Andrew is uh yep, just content to do like a war factory first. He's gonna build five rifles, just protect all his oils. I mean with Fetus covering the middle too, he should be totally fine. Uh, the only thing he has to worry about is the feeder fetus is over aggressive and pushes into both these armies he'll quickly evaporate all of them and it looks like that actually might happen depending on where these armies meet it looks like fazar is probably going to take a better engagement here he's got a little bit better concave plus the other resources from creo and uh there he goes fetus is slaughtered that is an abortion in game it looks like uh creo is definitely going for the sub pin yep he needed to build that power plant to reach over there Again, controlling this is actually really good, just lets you know so much of what's going on about your opponent's ore. Uh, you don't really see too much into it, just past like uh, right here, I think, if I remember correctly. But we'll have to see. This map is pretty big on the bottom side, but again, you expect this kind of get clogged up. There'll be a lot of like base pushing here, and then a lot more freedom to rotate your army here. So, uh, you know, missile subs are going to be pretty good. And we see the first transport coming out here. Missile subs would be pretty good. Gunboats would be not really effective. It's more tier 3 stuff that's going to matter. I guess gunboats and destroyers down on this side may be pretty good, but it's going to be a little more late game anyways, which, you know, just building destroyers or missile subs and cruisers right here and bombarding this area is probably going to be more effective. It looks like uh, Fetus is also going there. He's going for his own transport and he's going to have some more infantry. Transports are buffed, obviously. They carry, I think it is 12, maybe 10. I think it's 10. First sub coming out here too. They are also different. I could go over balance challenges for everything, but it just be probably tedious. You just uh, kind of talk about them as I see them. And uh, if they actually matter, you can see this first capture of the communication center from Creo. And we'll see how much you actually see. So again, not super much, but it does let you know all of the ore of their first sub shooting. These subs no longer have tracking torpedoes, but they do have better armor. All ships have better armor. Gunboats can only attack subs with their uh, depth charges. So as long as this sub keeps moving, it should be all right. And uh, yeah, if you don't move those gunboats, then they are going to get slaughtered. Creo is probably going to win this with the help of Division. In fact, he totally is. And that sub is going to get one more first out. Maybe we will kill it. He's going to have to move it. And it's going to be so close. I don't think it's going to be able to kill it. Oh, just misses it. And it stays up. That is unfortunate. Another sub coming to help him out anyways, though. Creo landing some more infantry troops. So that is uh, probably the most exciting eighth play, naval gameplay in a long, long time. Although, uh, if you've seen my games... Me and Orb decided that we wanted to do a lot of naval, so there's actually a lot of fun naval there. Now we're seeing some micro here at sub doing okay. Uh, gumbos are actually really good with dealing with subs. They're basically all around better. Uh, if you keep moving them, as you can see, subs have a hard time hitting them. At the same time, if that sub keeps moving, it's pretty hard for gunboats to hit them. You have to kind of force fire. Uh, three gunboats definitely going to be able to deal with one sub. That's, you know, that's three times value pretty much. Creo trying to go for the naval yard. He's not going to be able to deal with one sub. And eventually that sub gets surrounded. And he is killed. Uh, you know, you probably need at least two to one gunboats to kill subs. So three to one, totally fine there. Subs are a little bit more expensive at 750 than a gunboat at 500. So 
it is what it is. Let's see what we got going on on the round side. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> looks like uh, just some really deep infantry in the flanks right there. And it uh, looks like Kryo now has a landing force there. One rocket. It's just gonna go ahead and kill that. Probably not a bad idea at all. Kryo has firmly established all of this, which is nice. And he's trying again with these subs, but he just doesn't have the numbers yet. Although, you know, there goes one gunboat. Two gunboats are pretty low down. He has another sub over there too. And it looks like Andrew is doing his APC build again. Not a bad idea, although that's a really weird placement for that uh, ref. He didn't call right there. He's just long distance mining. That's a, okay, I guess. Gunboat going to go down. And those two rockets definitely helped out there. Fazar just uh, saying, I'm going to take this battle. I'm done with this naval shooting and I'm going to push across. Uh, and that's probably the correct move. If Andrew wants to play this in passively and not control this middle, then it's going to be really hard. They could easily get cut off here, and there's just not enough eco to make anything meaningful. Uh, we'll have to see, though, if Fazar is aggressive and tries to push over here and cut this off. Otherwise, Andrew does have a little bit of a lifeline. At the same time, you know, Fetus also has to expand out here, too. So it's not like you can just stick in one base as Fetus. Fetus is going to take off. This old Eric probably decapped this one, too. And uh, a lot of naval battle going on just for this one corner, but again, Kuro's doing the right thing, you have to expand, and Fetus is kind of doing the wrong thing and just trying to do naval the entire time. Big chunk taken out of that uh, transport there, but he's going to load it up with a lot of infantry. And one more, and he's in, and that two ref is probably going to have a bad deal. Maybe if you put him in front, that transport that could be pretty good. Oh, he's got to get him out. Barely gets him out, and the transport gets away, that's nice too. But with a vision advantage, he might actually win this battle, and I think he's going to, since they are focused on that transport anyways. A perfect flanking arm right there. His are just walling off to pretty much the middle. That's kind of funny. But he has had an outlet right here. So this could be uh, pretty bad. That's a lot of APCs, a lot of infantry, and not a whole lot of tanks for Fazar yet. He's got to really get a forward war factor going on to help him. But I don't think Andrew wants to take this in vision of the base. He wants to kind of come over the ore. One tank going down for Fazar. That could actually be pretty bad. Uh, yeah, this is going to be really weird. Pillbox actually working against Fazar now since the walls are helping him. But here comes, let's see how good the crushes are. I think they're going to be okay this time. Pretty good so far. Here we go. There's, there they are. Yeah, that was insane crushing. And the artillery support from Fetus is actually going to make a big deal here. Fazar is going to get pushed back. These three heavy tanks are not the answer what he needs. He just needs anti-infantry. He needs rifles. He needs pillboxes. And he needs sling towers. Blackhawk not going to be able to kill that. MCV, I don't think. Oh, it actually is going to get away with it. These two are on move order, and that is a big problem. Sorry, gets pushed off. He's going to lose his tier 2, too. So this is actually suddenly looking decently for uh, Andrew and Fetus. These three subs, fortunately, not getting micro right now and uh, getting pretty much slaughtered. Gunboats were uh, constantly on the move, too, so that's unfortunate. Does lose one gunboat? Maybe two? Nope. Maybe one more rifle? Nope. Goes down. So there was like six gunboats and killed two subs. It's definitely cost efficient for the gunboats gonna lose a transport too because why not but gunboats cannot deal with these two rocket soldiers they're actually gonna be super annoying if they get into range the last of this little fazar base going down but he did have a tank over there it looks like he killed at least two maybe three harvesters over there that's actually quite big yak coming to come and deal with these gunboats totally can do that and the sub will kill the last gunboat so yeah as you can see if you don't micro your naval it quickly goes away it's kind of a hallmark of naval and again Naval not necessarily supposed to be a huge force, it's supposed to be more of a supporting role. But, uh, you know, sometimes you're going to have to have that micro battle, which is going to make all the difference there. Oh yeah, getting picked off from the airfield, that's pretty good. Seen this a lot from the games that I saw of Fetus, he likes to go tier 2 and uh, just pump out Navy and Blackhawks, which is, you know, a solid Europe combo. Uh, unfortunately, in 2v2s, I don't know if that works, we'll have to see how this game goes. It does have a large uh, amount of artillery, just uh, shadowing... Andrew's army over here, but this one tank somehow still alive, and Andrew still has not expanded after this, which is kind of crazy. He's even just building another ref there. Somebody needs to respond to this, because two raffles isn't going to do it. There you go. Andrew is finally getting on top of it. Uh, two destroyers, that is 2,000. Versus two subs, that is uh, 1,500. So there's a $500 more expensive value towards the destroyers, and these subs will absolutely kill destroyers if they're on the move, but again, destroyers have three depth charges now, so if that sub is standing still, they can quickly disappear. Can't one-tap a uh, destroyer with the, you can't one tap a sub with destroyers it actually takes like four or five depth charges to do but could be a pretty bad deal if it does happen Zars meter tanks getting way too far ahead and those artillery absolutely having a field day 
but this flak is actually going to be pretty important. Loses two of or three of the five artillery. Maybe we'll lose a fifth one. Those artillery absolutely made it. Would have helped here, but again, uh, I just don't know if that army of Kuros would have been able to deal with it anyways. I think they'd have been all right. I hear that flak just poking away at that uh, medium tank. Would be funny if it actually got into range and killed itself. That is totally possible. Fetus, ooh, going for the power snipe. Not a bad idea. Yep, that does put Farzar low power. Probably should kill the SD if he knows it's there, but he's just going to set on gun power. That's really fine. Don't think he has enough left to kill that SD now, but again, just controlling this area right here. Having the old Derek's is also nice. I think I saw a GPS go up. Yeah, I did. So they're going to see that there is probably a meter tank coming out of there. That's the one they're probably chasing and forgot about. Large army here from Korea. Large army here from Fazar. Still no expansion from Fetus, and I think that is a bad mistake. Andrew just now expanding. In fact, he's built three MCVs. That's kind of weird. Maybe he's going to plan on expanding four Fetus. Looks like that is the case here. Not a bad idea at all, considering the, way, the layout of this map, but it's just a lot more taxing for Andrew in this case. More micro constantly to do that. Oh, unfortunately, low power for uh, <laughs> Andrew right there. Not going to be able to kill that tank, but the tank is far away, and then you go get sapped. See if Fazar pulls it away. He does pull it away at a smart. And it looks like we got a good destroyer force coming out here, but there is for now five, six subs. There's four destroyers, five destroyers. I think the subs will take this, especially if this is the perfect angle for him, but they're both on. Nope, there we go. One destroyer down, one sub instantly down. Micro is uh, looking pretty good for Korea. He's lost one sub, unfortunately, but he's just got to keep this moving. Nope. There goes another. Nope, barely survives. One more sub goes down. That one almost dies. There we go. They're going to get another destroyer. And the Blackhawks here are probably going to make the difference. Yeah, subs are still... I mean, Blackhawks do a lot less damage to subs. You can force fire to reveal those subs if you know where they are, but that is harder to do. Um, yeah, tier 2 is where missile subs are at now, so that's going to be the Soviet AA. So Blackhawks and Destroyers are still going to be working really well. It's just a very hard combo to deal with as allies, or as Soviets, rather. Huge army down here, and it looks like Andrew is going to see it, but they have to be very careful. But they're just kind of still in here. Oh, these Blackhawks are killing more refineries. That's actually really good. Oh, but a gun does kill two of them. Not a bad idea at all. Let's see if there is a long boat transition. I see that there is a Chronosphere and a Nuke Style up, so this is going to be the long game. This tank from Vizar has been brutal, just absolutely finding the snipes on Harvester somehow. There's an A uh, Parajot right in the middle there. Probably not going to go super well. I think Fetus is relatively aware of it, and yeah, he is. Does not lose the Blackhawk there, that's nice to see. Now it is three subs against a handful of ships that, I, yeah, Creo's kind of, he has a really tough choice here. He can invest a lot more into subs or he can invest a lot more into army. I think going for land army is much more important. Um, at this rate, you've ne necessarily lost the battle since it's harder to control the water on this map, but this is going to be tough to break through unless you have a lot of subs. And uh, again, the micro is kind of on the Soviet player to be better than the allies player and allies micro is a little bit easier to just kind of sh keeping your ship moving where so you have to like split uh don't clump your subs together since slash damage is a problem oh he's gonna lose all the blackhawks there i think two of them get away now we do have some big attacks over here but they should be able to deal with this as soon as the armors rotate over all oh, those artillery absolutely brutal i think that archer is also going to be in great position oh my god those artillery making a huge difference. See if another one can shoot off there. But they did lose a bunch of eco, unfortunately. Prayer bombs? Oh, that could be pretty good. It's going to get artillery. That is important. It's a large amount of infantry there, too. But yeah, again, Fazar is going to be pushed back and Kuru is going to be pushed back. But they killed a lot of eco. And at the same time, their eco has just been not touched this entire time. In fact, this entire half of the map has not been really seen. It's just been all action on Andrew and Fetus' side. And here goes the, uh, what is it? Is it an armada? I think it's, I think it's an armada or a flotilla for naval. The flotilla is moving out against three subs that are just kind of piled around a rock, which is not where they want to be at all. Uh, they want to be in open water, probably preferably spread out in a, like a line, like a perfect concave. Let's we'll see how that goes when they do go into an engagement. Looks like this army is going to get collapsed upon. Nice little engagement here by Creo. Might get a harvester first trouble. Yep, gets one. He's probably going to lose the rest of his infantry. Don't know if it was worth it, but killing an officer is always nice. And then this army is absolutely 
found and collapsed upon. But that is going to leave this army a chance to kill that MC if he's not paying attention. There goes those three subs. Did not get a chance to see him. And that is the first missile sub. Oh, get some. But yeah, missile subs are not what he needs right now. He needs to really have a lot more investment into Navy. And uh, yeah, a lot of those subs instantly going down. One more going down for another weak destroyer. And uh, those two rock soldiers actually doing a lot of damage. You can see, if you keep moving, it's really hard for subs to hit. Uh, that's something I'm looking into for the next kind of balance faction. It's kind of reverting that, since uh, a lot of people complain. Though it was really weird. Oh, demo truck. Where was it? I was right here. I don't think it got too much. Actually, looks like it got spotted first. Finally, all the naval going down for uh, Kyrio. That's totally fine. What else is he really going to do? He has to go into cruiser tech now. These are coming in with the Blackhawk support and the artillery support. These artillery are not going to last very long at all. There goes one, two. Actually, you might see the tech center and the IC, which would be pretty important. Although this is a huge army for Andrew, and that is not enough to deal with it. He's going to have to retreat all the way or lose all of it. But Andrew is scared, maybe in the middle. Oh, because he's got he's getting pushed right here. All right, that makes sense. Finally, see some longbows transition. Oh, but there's a A gun. And uh, yeah, as you can see, control in the middle is an important part of this map. You cannot forget about it. It looks like Andrew. It's kind of his job. Maybe Creo or uh, Fetus rather should be focusing a little bit less on the naval and a little bit more on the ground army here. But Bazaar has a foothold here. I don't think he's going to be able to hold it just because Andrew is rotating his entire army over. Uh, this could go bad really fast. Tanya would be really great, but I don't really see one. Here comes the IC push. That was a little early, but... Oh, and a Chrono push. Where did the... I think he sent a... Artillery away, maybe? I'm not really sure. But the artillery all going down there. Oh, the Blackhawks in perfect concave there. A lot of Andrew's army already gone. I think this is actually going to go really poorly for Andrew and Fetus. These artillery are just perfectly like nestled into the base. They're really hard to get to. There's a huge army here that they haven't dealt with. Yeah, somehow Creo and Sar are just going to hold us with a handful of stuff. MCV is actually still alive for now, but it's probably going to go down in just a second. This longbow can't actually engage. There is a A gun there. Just out of range. There goes one artillery, but there's plenty more to deal with. And yeah, that was pretty much their whole army for nothing. Take a look at the army graph, and it just drops. Although Fazars did drop heavily too, but not quite the same. He still has this huge army up here. <laughs> Somehow, since he's still here, it's actually getting capped by Andrew. That's uh, funny. That will give him double tech, and he could sort of use it, but it might instantly go down. Oh, he's actually going to pair bombs on guys. That's unfortunate. Oh, but it, it was a bait. He sacrificed them just to get these pair bombs onto him. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, it was not worth it. They killed a handful of infantry and heavy tank. And this army is still unopposed. Pretty much nothing there to respond to it. A little bit of attachment there, but that's not enough. Hanju army just absolutely plummeting. That is unfortunate. And our Korea's pitched in. This game is looking pretty close to over. Maybe a... A nuke will get there. A nuke is two minutes away. I don't know. That's not quite enough, I don't think, to deal with it. Looks like their destroyers are getting cleaned up here just by a handful of infantry. Again, destroyers got heavily nerfed, so infantry are going to be that much better against them anyways. And, uh, yeah. Nothing in the Allies' arsenal really deals with infantry. Good Tanya here. Slaughtering a lot of infantry. <laughs> That's a very forward Tesla coil that goes down, but she does get Tanya, which is important. And then the Blackhawk flock is, a. Uh, Getting up to Creo levels, about maybe a quarter of a Creo right there. Here with tier two up there. But yeah, it looks like uh once again, Fetus and Andrew's earnings were just kinda hit pretty hard. They stabbed pretty good right here about, you know, maybe five minutes ago, but they lost all the eco recently and Bazaar and Creo have just again been untouched this entire game. Blackhawks killing a bunch of artillery. And uh once again Fetus and Fazar or Creo and Fazar rather just base pushing with an MCV. They can now control more than 50% of the map. I don't know how these guys have actually had the eco they have. Maybe it's just been there. Cruiser is going to do some uh, light damage, but they're going to take a while to actually hammer that base. And what they really need is to stabilize here. Another pair of bomb coming in for Creo. It's like it's coming from the bottom. That's uh, it's going to get the A gun, which will be nice. I think it will, at least, but don't think it's going to do too much other than that. Kill one rifle for the trouble, too. Maybe a second one. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to deal with this. IC is ready, so this could be all the difference there. He needs to get on the flax right now. I think that is his best bet. But unfortunately, he's losing a lot of it, and he can't afford the retreat. Oh, and now he's low power, too. That is unfortunate. He really needs that power. He needs to power down the nuke immediately. Power down something else. 
Oh, and he goes down to low power again. He needs to sell something, but he's just getting absolutely classed upon. I don't think there's going to be that much hope left for him. I think Andrew and Fetus are pretty much dead. A little late on the IC. This army is already in there, and his army is very far away. Yeah, they just... Uh, I don't think Fetus' strategy really worked out here. He needed to expand more, focus a little bit less on the naval, and more on the ground war. Uh, that is definitely a common mistake I could see people making. Navy is not going to win you a game unless it is a full water map, and this is definitely not a full water map. Uh, some of the other map pools, some of the other maps in the map pool are definitely more naval based. Uh, Wahooey, like, more like an 80 20% split for Navy first ground. Uh, this one's definitely more like 20 80 for ground. And then fresh rain, kind of in intermediate, a lot of base pushing there, but there is a big lake in the middle, kind of like this, but bigger. There was another demo truck somewhere. I don't know where. Unfortunately, I've missed two of them now. Maybe that was a nuke. It was a nuke. Uh, it looks like it didn't even get that much at all, to be honest. Cruisers firing into the dark there. That's unfortunate, too. They've just been absolutely ineffective this entire game. And uh, yeah, I imagine we're going to see the GG here pretty shortly. This army, as soon as it wants to assault move, is going to be fine. These Blackhawks just free reign over the space right now. Although they might run into some longbows. Fortunately, two of those longbows out of ammo. There goes an MCV. This MCV is going to fall pretty shortly. Fetus's MCVs are in trouble. No Tanya coming out, I don't think. It's not going to get out in time. Yeah, this game is uh, its over. It kind of shows you that you really have to focus on the ground. You have to control this area on this map. So, I'm not sure this is the best game to see on this map, but it was uh, definitely entertaining. I feel like it gave me at least a lot of valuable data about some Navy and uh, how the map plays. Any alterations and anything like that, but... Imagine we're going to see that GG soon. I think maybe Fetus and Andrew are just going to play to the very end, because why not at this rate? And Link, they have a sneaky uh, transport into anywhere. And there's a story over here, so that's cool. Uh, could definitely reach that if a Harvester is on it, but they're currently not. And it looks like the story is actually, or the cruisers got killed by that, so that's unfortunate. Chronosphere, I think it got fired off once. It doesn't matter. And Andrew is gone, and there's the GG well played, so... Korean Fazar taking the series 2-0. It's going to help them for sure in the run for the playoffs. Uh, yeah, that was uh, a lot to go on. This game definitely better than game one, I'll say that. Uh, 21 minutes instead of 10, so double the time. But, but yeah, I guess I'll see you all next week.